So whether or not you're a weekend camper, a passionate traveler, or a gray nomad living out of a van full time, there is no dispute that solar is one of the most popular and readily available power sources for off-grid living. Here at Exploring Oz, I enjoy finding, testing, and reviewing all sorts of power systems, from batteries to solar panels, generators to power stations, to find out what works well and for what scenario. But today, we're here to talk about this. This is the newest solar panel by Blue Eddy in Australia, the SP350. Today, we're gonna to talk all about this panel, the physical and technical features. We're gonna test the panel. We're gonna talk about who it's designed for and who it definitely won't work for, and discuss whether or not it really is a portable panel. So let's get straight into it. So here is the new Blue Eddy SP350 panel. It is a 350 watt, four paneled, material backed folding solar panel. It has an ETFE laminated coating, putting out 9.7 amps at a huge 36 volt with an open circuit voltage of 46 volt. Now before we get into the technical details, let's talk about the elephant in the room. And to be honest, it's almost the size of a small elephant. These panels are huge, measuring in 54 centimeters across, 94 centimeters tall, and about six centimeters deep. These are by no means a small and compact unit. But considering they're 350 watt in power, they're actually designed quite efficiently. Now in keeping with that size, these are no lightweights either, measuring in at just about 12 and a half kilos. Before we dive into the details of these panels, I wanna talk about the packaging. Now I don't often feature unboxings on this channel, however, I think Blue Eddy's packaging is worth mentioning. I order a lot of gear online. Almost everything I buy is purchased online and I see a variety of packaging techniques used to protect the items I'm buying but I've never come across anything like Blue Eddy's. These panels, just like every item that has arrived from Blue Eddy, are secured in some of the best packaging I've ever seen. They are double boxed in a thick, heavy duty cardboard. Removing the second box and opening this up, the panel is safely secured in the center of the box by foam supports on either side, and finally wrapped in a plastic bubble wrap to prevent any surface marks. Like I mentioned, I've ordered a lot online from my Honda EU22i generator to my 270 degree 27 kilo awning from vehicle batteries, camera and camping gear, but I've never seen packaging quite as secure as that from Blue Eddy's. But anyway, getting rid of the box, let's have a look at the contents. I wanna start by a bit of an unexpected physical observation I made when I first received these panels from Blue Eddy. When looking at Blue Eddy's website, we can see the SP350 is advertised as roughly a 27 by 27 inch panel when folded, which measures to be roughly a square design. In addition to that, all of the pictures reflected that square design, mimicking that of the SP200 panels, however, just larger. As we can see, that's not the panel I received. This one here being clearly rectangle, measuring in at roughly 37 by 21 inches. Now originally I thought that maybe Blue Eddy just used images from the SP200, made them larger and put some different dimensions on them until they had some updated content. But if we look at those images, you can clearly see that the photos there represent a panel that has four by four cells within each of those individual panels. And the SP200 only has three by three. So whether or not the rectangle is the new updated shape, either way, this is the panel we're gonna be testing today. This panel is finished with this material covering, which is the same as the SP200 and has held up very well so far on the panels that I've been testing for some time now. When folded, we can see this new blue plastic swivel handle. Now I've been in contact with Blue Eddy and I've confirmed that this handle will also come on some of the smaller panels in the range, replacing that previous rubber and material strap design. On the front folded panel, we have this zipped pocket which houses our 12 gauge wires and printed technical data. I'm a big fan of Blue Eddy printing their technical details directly onto the panel so you can't lose that information and it comes in particularly handy when pairing up these panels with multiple different types of sources which we'll get onto later on in the video. Now the wiring coming out of the solar panel is a nice thick 12 gauge wire and terminates into a pair of MC4 connectors which is the industry standard for solar connections. Now I get a lot of comments on these, on these videos regarding how they should be transferred into Anderson plugs, which seems to be more of a popular option here in Australia. But I can almost guarantee this won't happen and there's good reason that they use these connections. And that is because MC4 connectors can be easily wired together in a series pattern between multiple panels to provide the maximum voltage and maximum power output, which is something that a lot of people use and would be very inconvenient with general Anderson plugs. 
Moving on, the lack of exposed ports and the sealed module where the cables exit the back of the solar panel supports the IP65 rating. And this panel uses the same securing, folding and supporting mechanisms of the smaller SP120 and the SP200 panels. Undoing the plastic clasps, the unit simply unfolds, revealing those four huge individual panels. Now there is a single wide rigid leg on the rear of each panel that is removed from a Velcro tab to pull out and support the panel on a 45 degree angle. There's a strap between the leg and the panel, preventing it from pulling away and the panel falling over. And in addition to that, there's an elastic strap to the pivot point, which pulls the leg back to the panel, making it super quick and easy to pack and fold up. Once set up, the rigidity within each panel and between the four legs hold the panel on that 45 degree angle nice and securely. Now you might think that with the size of a panel like this, the wind might pick it up and flip it over. But what you need to remember is even though there is an increased surface area for the wind to pick it up, this panel here is also much heavier than its smaller alternatives, therefore keeping it relatively planted in moderate winds. Now, of course, in high winds, we do have the grommet holes on each of the bottom corners on the front facing panel, and we can also use pegs on the legs where the retention straps join the back of the leg. And that would hold it down nice and securely. Now that we have opened it out, we can also see the design and the construction of the solar cell. This panel uses a high efficiency monocrystalline solar cell referred to as sun power, hence the model SP. The SP cells are able to capture more sunlight as they do not have a grid line electrical contacts and incorporate a solid rear copper backing, resulting in less chance of cracking or fracturing with movement and or the expansion and contraction with temperature changes. The panels also have an ETFE laminate on top, and this is one of the most durable materials for solar, reducing the chance of scratches and damage. The ETFE coating also is less likely to fade or develop that yellow tinge that is sometimes experienced, and in my case, experienced on the more traditional rooftop solar panel that I have on my Land Cruiser, but we'll get more into that in a later video. So unfolded, this panel comes in at just under 220 centimeters long, it's still 94 centimeters high, and the legs fold out to be about 80 centimeters behind this front ridge line here. So it's a fairly large panel, and you're gonna need a reasonable plot of land just to set it up to make sure it has full exposure to sunlight. We know it's a large panel, but does a big panel mean big results? Well, let's go for a drive and find out. So setting up the panels today, we are looking at some great weather conditions. It's about 25 degrees today. It's a little bit of haze in the skies from some nearby fires, but overall, very favorable weather conditions. Today, I'm gonna to be testing and measuring the solar panels through this unit here, the Blue Eddy's AC200P portable power station. Now there's two reasons I'm gonna be using this unit. Firstly, these solar panels are designed to be used with portable power stations just like this one. And secondly, I just don't have that high input measuring equipment required to measure the high readings from these solar panels. Today, we're gonna to be testing all of the data so with that of the smaller SP200 watt panels to see whether or not Blue Eddy have transferred their high efficiency and quality from their small panels into these larger ones. We're gonna be testing the open circuit voltage, the wattage and voltage inputs coming into the AC200P, and to see how these panels react being wired in both series and parallel connections. So starting with a standard voltage test. All we're doing here is just measuring the raw voltage from the MC4 connectors to ensure that they are somewhere around the open circuit voltage nominated on the technical data. This is also one way to give us an indication that the panels are working correctly. The SP350 panels are bringing in 43.5 volt. Comparing this with the 43.2 volt from Bluetti's technical data, we are looking good. And the SP200 comparison panels bring in 24.7 volt when compared with 24 volt from the data. So again, a good conditioned panel. Now voltage is easy to measure, but it's the power output that can attest to the quality and efficiency of a particular panel. Now, like I've mentioned in my previous review video on the, these SP200 watt panels, a single SP200 watt is not going to be able to provide power to the Bluetti AC200, and that's due to the input tolerances of that power station. The Bluetti AC200 requires 35 to 150 volt to start accepting charge, and as we've just seen, this only brings in about 24 volt. So although close, it just doesn't provide enough power on a consistent basis to tick that requirement. Plugging in the SP350 watt panels and we can watch the AC200P accept and charge the power station. The SP350 is able to bring in a huge 272 watts and is working very well to accept and recharge that large lithium battery. 
Now at 272 watts, that's approximately 77% of the maximum capacity here of the SP350. So that's not too bad at all. And that would mean that we could charge the Blue Eddy AC200P from zero to 100% in about six and a half hours with one of these panels. Let's move on to add some more panels and wire them in parallel to see how they perform. Now again, wiring two of the SP200 watt panels in parallel is not gonna be an option that's gonna be compatible with the AC200P. And that's just the nature of parallel connections. As the power increases with the two in parallel together, the voltage remains at that open circuit level, therefore not meeting that minimum threshold. Connecting two of the SP350 panels in parallel together, we can see the AC200 again accepts that power and brings in a huge 464 watt at 39 volt. We can see that the power in watts has increased significantly, how the voltage has remained the same. This calculates to be about 66% efficiency between these two panels, which is not too bad for a parallel connection, and would mean we could charge the Blue Eddy from zero to 100% in just under four hours. So moving on to series connections, and there's no doubt that this connecting these panels into series together is going to be a lot more efficient and the preferred method for both of these setups. So connecting two of these SP200 watts together in series, and we can finally see some charge being brought into the Blue Eddy power station. Measuring in at 294 watts at 35 volt, an efficiency of 73%, which is not too bad. Connecting the SP350 watt panels in series, we can see a huge 575 watt at 68 volt. This provides an efficiency of 82%. Now at those efficiency levels, we could effectively charge that Bluetti from zero to 100% in just over three hours, which is very impressive. Now there's nothing stopping us adding another 350 watt panel in series just to max out the AC200's charging input at 700 watt, but we wouldn't really be getting our value for money for doing so. Now another thing to note is that we can overload the wattage on the AC200 and the MPPT charger inside that unit will act as a gate and allow the maximum wattage in, but you can't overload the voltage. So if you're going to add more than the, this many panels in series, just make sure you're not overloading that 150 volt maximum. So today our testing shows that Bluetti have managed to retain the quality and efficiency that we've noted in the SP200 watt panels in the review that we did before and brought that over into the larger SP350 watt panels. Our testing today also showed that connecting these panels up in a series connection over a parallel makes a huge difference to the efficiency and the power output we're going to get from these panels. We saw that power output increase from 464 watts to 575 watts, which would effectively knock off about an hour and a half charging time if charging up the AC200P from zero to 100. Now, as mentioned earlier, we are testing today at about 25 degrees. However, the sun is quite warm and we can see here that the face panels are heating up to about 65 degrees, which is quite warm. Now, what I have noticed is when these panels do heat up like this, they do lose a little bit of their rigidity. Now, just due to the weight of these panels and the way that the legs are designed, I have noticed that these panels do tend to bow a little bit when they do lose a little bit of that rigidity. Now, something I haven't noticed to affect the results and shouldn't really affect anything long-term, However, it's just an observation I made during my testing. The last test we're going to conduct today is a partial shade or a partial coverage test. We're going to cover up just one and two of these panels with these two SP350 watts wired in series together to see what effect that has on the AC200 and the power that it can bring in. So the first test I'm going to do is just cover up one of the panels on one of the SP350s. And this will effectively represent one eighth of the total capacity of these two panels wired in series together. What we can see is as soon as we do that, we can see our power wattage go from 580 straight down to 382. So it's still pulling in a reasonable amount, but it's definitely more than one eighth of that proportion of these two panels. Moving that tower to cover the majority of two of the individual panels on one of the SP350 watts, representing a quarter of the solar input, and we can see the voltage and wattage almost drops away completely, all the way down to 59 watts at its maximum peak. Removing that towel, and we can see that wattage instantly lifts straight back up to 580 watts, bringing in our full voltage. So what this test shows is that even having a small proportion of these panels covered is going to have a significant effect on the output that these panels can produce. This is going to determine whether or not these panels are gonna be viable for you. These panels are already large enough and trying to find somewhere out in the open, unobstructed from shadows and trees throughout the entire day, but also from foot traffic as well. Me standing in front of these panels is going to have an effect on how much the AC200 is currently bringing in. So just another thing to keep in mind. 
So what can these solar panels be used to charge? Well, obviously they can work well with some of the Blue Eddy power stations. Unfortunately, they can't charge at the power stations of the EB55 and the EB70, and that's just due to those voltage input restrictions. However, they're going to work well for the AC200, the AC200 Max, the AC300, and also the EB150. So if you've got any of those and you want some high charge, these panels are going to work well. But what if you don't have a power station and you want to run things like your house battery in your vehicle or even plug these into your van, are they going to work? This is where you're going to need to know the technical specifications of your setup to know whether or not these SP350s will work for you. What you need to understand is that these panels are unregulated, which means they're always going to provide an open circuit voltage of 43 volt and maximum 9.7 amps at 36 volt, which is a lot more than batteries can handle being directly charged from the panel. If you were to plug those panels directly to a battery, you're going to cause damage and it's going to be an issue. So what you need to do is input a controller, either a solar controller or some sort of battery management system in order to regulate that power and then safely charge the batteries that you've got on board. So let's use the example of my Land Cruiser 200 series. Now I'm running a Red Arc BCDC 1240D battery charger. And what this does is takes power from the primary battery once it's reached a certain voltage and safely charge the secondary battery in my engine bay. What it also does though is regulate solar power through external inputs. So I'm able to plug in unregulated solar panels, the Red Arc will manage that power and then safely charge the auxiliary battery. But what I do know is that the Red Arc can only handle a voltage between 17.5 and 32 volt. And you can probably see there I've got a bit of an issue. These panels with their high voltages are just not going to work with my setup in the Land Cruiser. This is going to be the same along most of the Red Arc range. The BCDC 1220s, 1240s, 1250s, and even the Manager 30s all have a maximum of 32 volt as their input range. Therefore, these panels are just not going to be suitable running through those chargers. However, if you compare this with something like the Renergy Rover chargers at both the 40 and the 60 amps, they're able to accept up to 100 and 150 volt of solar input respectively, which is going to be fine and work very well for that setup. So who are these panels best suited for them? Now after using and carrying around these panels for a little while now, I believe they're best suited for the base camp setup. Someone who's gonna go set up in an area for a long period of time, perhaps use high powered appliances or even low powered appliances continuously for a long period of time. They are relatively efficient in terms of their size for their capacity when compared to something like a 250 watt house panel. And even though they are quite large, they can be easily carried in a camper trailer or caravan. And wiring them in series together is going to provide a huge advantage over some smaller panels and carrying around multiple small panels and provide some huge power input for some of those high powered appliances. Now I also think this is going to benefit those who have caravans or even large camper trailers. It gives you the ability to park your van in the shade without having to worry about the rooftop solar. The fact that you can place these panels away from your van and still bring in a very significant amount of power is going to be able to provide a huge benefit for those setups. Now if you do have rooftop panels and you do park your van in the sun, using those panels in conjunction with these panels is going to provide an enormous amount of power input and perhaps negate some of the high powered appliances you use in your van during the day or maybe even things like aircon units. Now for those who don't have caravans or camper trailers but do own these portable power stations like the Blue Eddy AC200, you're going to see some significant benefits if you are using high powered appliances and require that high solar input. Wiring two of these SP350s together is a lot simpler, more efficient, and more convenient than wiring multiple lower powered solar panels together. In addition to that, if you are able to max out the solar input on the AC200 at 700 watt, you're able to charge that unit from zero to 100% in about two and a half hours, which is just awesome. So there you have it, that is my overview, review and test of Bluetti's SP350 watt solar panels and I'm glad to see that they've managed to retain their efficiency and quality from those smaller SP200s and implement them into the big 350 watt panels. Now I'm looking forward to testing these out on my new van to see how much we can power off grid for an extended period of time and just how quickly we can recharge those batteries. But as always guys, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end. I hope you managed to get some good information out of this video, regardless of whether or not these big 350 watt panels are going to be for you or not. But as always, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers.